In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful, thank you, Mr. President, for convening this emergency meeting. We thank Lebanon and Algeria for requesting this meeting. We also thank Mr. Caldo and Mr. Tork for their briefing. We welcome the presence of His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Buhabib, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Immigrants of Lebanon in this meeting. Mr. President, Member of the Security Council, this meeting is requested to address systematic and provocative act of terror committed by occupying regime of Israel on September 17 and 18 in Beirut, Lebanon, as well as in a part of Syria, deliberately targeting innocent civilians, including children. The method of this barbaric attack was unprecedented as it was covertly handheld communication device was deliberately detonated, resulting in loss of at least 37 civilian lives and injuring thousands more, most likely of them injured from their eyes, including Iran's ambassador. Despite concerns by international community, this regime continues its aggression against the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Lebanon and Syria. Just this morning, an air strike targeted the residential areas in Zahia, a densely populated suburb of Beirut, causing civilians casualties and loss of life. Mr. President, targeting thousands of people across various age groups in densely populated area of Beirut, whatever in their home, streets, workplaces, or shopping centers, is a clear act of terrorism and a flagrant violation of international law, in particular international humanitarian human rights law, and numerous resolution of this body, especially resolution on the protection of civilians. These widespread and systematic crimes aimed at mass killing, severe suffering, and serious injury to civilians constitutes crimes against humanity. Reports suggest that Israel intended to kill at least 5,000 civilians while some devices either undistributed or deactivated. The Israeli barbaric attack has left Lebanon hospitals and medical staff in an unprecedented state of emergency and attacks have sparked widespread fear and panic across Lebanon. Undoubtedly, Israel bears full responsibility for the perpetration of such horrific crimes. The repercussion of this attack extends far beyond Lebanon's border. The targeting of communication devices in the heart of Beirut sends a clear message to the international community. Israel is willing to commit any crime, no matter how extreme to violate and attack the sovereignty and security of countries in the region and threaten regional and international peace and security. The Islamic Republic of Iran condemns in the strongest term these horrible and barbaric attacks. We extend our deepest condolences and sympathies to the people and the government of Lebanon and the families of the victims of this heinous terrorist attack. We wish a swift and full recovery to the injured and reaffirm our unwavering solidarity with our Lebanonese brothers and sisters. Mr. President, the attack on our ambassadors is a blatant violation of international law and diplomatic norms. The protection of diplomatic personnel is a fundamental principle of international relations. The Israeli terrorist attack has flagrant, flagrantly violated the 1961 Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations and 1973 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Crimes Against International Protected Persons, including diplomatic agents. We will regressly pursue accountability for the attack on our ambassador in Lebanon. We reserve our right under international law to take all necessary measures to respond to this egregious violation. Unfortunately, this Council has remained silent in the face of ongoing Israeli aggression and illegal actions, including the attack on Iran's diplomatic mission in Syria on 1 April 2024, 
Now again, this regime has crossed a red line by targeting our ambassador. Mr. President, let us not forget that these atrocious crimes against the people of Lebanon are part of a broader pattern of aggressive policy by Israeli regime. The Islamic Republic of Iran has repeatedly warned about the serious repercussions of malicious activities of the Israeli regime in the region. For the sake of regional peace, security, and the so-called ceasefire talks, the Islamic Republic of Iran has consistently shown maximum restraint. However, Israeli atrocities from the ongoing genocidal war against the Palestinian people and occupation of Palestinian territories to illegal strike in Syria and Lebanon on the attack on Iran diplomatic mission in Syria and covertly assassination of Palestine's former prime minister and the political leader of Hamas in Tehran demonstrate an Israeli relentless commitment to destabilizing the region and threatening international peace and security. Mr. President, the gravity of Israeli atrocities against the people of Lebanon must be recognized not just as an attack on Lebanon, but as a threat to peace and security across the region. We must ask ourselves, how much longer will be the international community allow such atrocious crime to go unchecked? For decades, Israel has engaged in a pattern of aggressive actions aimed at destabilizing the region, whether through military operation, <coughs> sabotage, or direct high attack on civilians. This continuous aggression endangers the peace and security of the Middle East, fueling cycles of violence and further entrenching conflict. Regrettably, the Security Council has failed in its duty to maintain international peace and security. Israel, malevolent activities are often overlooked or outright supported by certain Western nations. Unwavering political, military, and economic support provided to Israel by the United States and its allies enables this regime to continue its violations without fear of accountability. This unconditional support, coupled with the deliberate blocking of any international effort to hold Israel responsible, has created an environment of impunity. The international community must not ignore the role of the Western countries, in particular the United States and UK, play in enabling Israel's aggressions. These heinous crimes once again shown the Israel leadership has no intention to adhering to international norms or the so-called ceasefire negotiations, frequently referenced by the United States in this council as being near resolution. The international community, and particularly this council, has a duty to comfort, confront not only the direct perpetrators of such crimes, but also those who provide them with the means and political cover to commit them. The failures of this body to hold Israel accountable has only emboldened the regime, allowing it to continue its aggressive and unlawful behavior. The Islamic Republic of Iran stand firmly with the government and the people of Lebanon, and we will not rest until those responsible for these atrocities are held accountable. We reaffirm our commitment to upholding the principles of international law and the Charter of the United Nations. However, it is incumbent upon this Council to act to stand up for justice, for peace, and the protection of innocent civilians. In conclusion, Mr. President, I, categor I categorically reject the baseless accusation made by the representative of Israeli regime against my country. The representative of this terrorist regime led by a notorious prime minister who is under arrest warrant by the International Criminal Court for the commission of war against in Gaza consistently relies on lies and disinformation to evade responsibility and to shift blame onto others. The very foundation of this regime is rooted in aggression, occupation, terror, and genocide. So nobody will take seriously this 
I thank the representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran for their statement. I give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran, Sayyid Rais. Sayyid Rais, Udli Bihazal Bayan. Thank you, Mr. President. I deliver the statement on behalf of the Arab Group of the United Nations here in New York. I wish to thank you for having positively responded to the request from the brotherly country of Algeria, a member of the Security Council, for the convening of this emergency meeting to to address the most recent escalation in the ongoing Israeli escalation against the fraternal people of Lebanon over the past year. I welcome the presence of the Foreign Minister of Lebanon, Mr. Abdullah Boabib. Mr. President, on Tuesday and Wednesday, on the 17th and 18th of September, Last, Lebanon was uh, was targeted by uh, targeted assassinations by Israel, targeting thousands of Lebanese civilians throughout the country. At the same time, as uh, thousands of uh, beepers and walkie-talkies exploded, resulting in the deaths of 37 people and 3,250 wounded. Many of these people remain in critical condition. The Israeli occupation entity, through the perpetration of this heinous crime, has uh, continued to escalate its, its aggression and terrorism, targeting Lebanese civilians, targeting them, targeting their families, in their homes, in public spaces, without the slightest consideration for the principles of international law, international human rights law, and the very basic principles of humanity and civilization. The brutality of the attack by the Israeli entity is nothing new, Mr. President. This entity, since its inception, perpetrated bloodshed, sowing horror. What is new, however, is the manipulation of modern-day technology, uh, uh, equipment that and devices that have been used for the well-being of people. These devices are now being used to perpetrate collective murder of civilians. The entity, the occupying entity, uses the, used commonplace devices for civilian purposes, used for civilian purposes in various sectors, and transformed these devices into ticking time bombs, killing those holding them without any distinction, sowing devastation around them. In this way, generating tremendous suspicion vis-a-vis -vis the reliability and the safety of communications devices. The authorities of the Israeli occupying power last month used cyber attacks to intercept air traffic, civilian air traffic. Uh, 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 imperiling the safety of passengers in Lebanese airspace. And this resulted in disruptions in the civil civilian operating system, resulting uh, uh, in, the, in the piracy of electronic devices, as well as of vital devices and applications. These are crimes that elucidate Israel's contempt for civilian life and international law. The Arab group condemns in the strongest terms the Israeli terrorist uh, acts against the fraternal Lebanese people. We call for accountability for the perpetrators of these crimes. We extend our deepest condolences to the families of the victims. And, uh, and we wish a speedy recovery to the injured. We extend our full solidarity with Lebanon, our full support for its resistance and its fight against Israeli aggression, which threatens its security and stability, which also represents an additional burden at a time when Lebanon is tackling many challenges in many sectors, including the health sector. The Arab group demands that the Security Council condemn this 
this is really cyber terrorism, this ongoing aggression against the brotherly Lebanese people, which is a part and parcel of the acts of genocide that are being perpetrated, ethnic cleansing, as well as systematic violations of international law being perpetrated by the Israeli occupying uh, 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 entity against the Israeli uh, Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. And we condemn aggressions against countries in the region, including Syria. The Arab group reiterates that Israeli acts of aggression will not, will not stymie the desire, of, uh, the, 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 the commitment of our uh, people to, uh, the, our attachment to the legitimate rights uh, to liberate uh, territory. We demand that the Security Council meet its responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security, and we demand an end for it to demand an end to this aggression, for the Security Council to enforce the relevant resolutions to end the Israeli occupation of Arab territories in Palestine, Syria, and Lebanon. The Arab group holds the Israeli occupying entity as a, a, for fully accountable for any escalation any situation that uh, results in full-blown war in the region. Mr. President, I now wish to deliver the following remarks in my national capacity. The Syrian delegation aligns itself with a statement of the Arab group. Syria condemns uh, the aggression and the ongoing terrorism against uh, uh, the Lebanese people, including cyber-terrorism, which claim the lives of dozens, injuring thousands, including the Iranian ambassador to Lebanon. We also condemn the barbaric aggression which targeted the south suburbs of Beirut, claiming the lives of 12 people, including children, which resulted in 66 people being wounded. Syria reaffirms its full solidarity with the fraternal Lebanese people, and we call upon all peoples throughout the world to condemn the Israeli aggression against Lebanon and to act to put an end to this and to demand accountability for the uh, authorities, the occupying authorities for the crimes that have perpetrated. Furthermore, we believe that states supporting Israel, uh, the United States first and foremost, shoulder full responsibility for the ongoing Israeli occupation, its acts of aggression, its barbaric crimes, as well as the obstruction at the Security Council, preventing the Security Council from upholding its responsibility to counter threats posed by the occupying power, threats to international peace and security. To conclude, there is a single reason for the instability in the region, that is the Israeli occupation of Arab lands in Palestine, in the Syrian Golan and in South Lebanon. The al Mashdal Shams, who which the representative of the occupation, has tried to manipulate uh, the history. These are children who are Syrian children residing in the occupied Syrian Golan, who aspire, as do their families, to live freely for the goal on to return to Syria the solution in the region can only the resolution in the, uh, in the region can only lie through an end to the occupation Israel's cessation to the systematic violations of international law thank you